welcome. I will be standing over on this side away from the speaker. Can you hear okay? Okay. Um, welcome. Thank you everybody for coming. We have been informed we're competing with a Cubs game and a Bears Packer game. So thank you for making us your choice of entertainment this evening. Um, I am Kim Utakis. I am the math coach at Prairie. I've been in the district for, this is my 14th year, and I used to teach first and second grade here at Ivy Hall. And I'm in my fifth year at, as a math coach. So thank you very much for coming. I'm going to let Julie introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Julie Shaver. I am the math and literacy coach at Willow Grove. Um, before that, I was, I've taught second and third grade at Country Meadows. Um, I've, also, I've been in the district for eight years. Um, and thank you guys very much for coming. Uh oh, I'm in a bad spot. Okay, <laughs> can you guys hear okay? All right. So we're really excited to talk, have you all here with us tonight. Our goals really are to, um, get you guys more familiar with what your children are doing at school during math every day and to understand our new curriculum, the components of um, Bridges and Number Corner. And we, our goal, our last goal for you is to understand how our, we work with kids every day to become mathematicians. So not just memorizing skills, but really what that means to be a whole child mathematician. Okay, okay, so, so you will hear us talk about bridges, number corner, and um, standards of mathematical practice tonight. So this year, our district implemented a new math curriculum, um, and it is from the Math Learning Center, and it, you'll hear bridges and number corner. Thanks. So a little bit about bridges. I'm not going to read these slides to you, but I'm just going to explain a little. We, um, Bridges is aligned with the Common Core Seat Standards, and it's rigorous, it's um, good for all kids. We have, it's linguistically, kinesthetically, and visually rich. It blends instruction, exploration, um, sharing practices all together every day with our students and classrooms. We work on a deep understanding of skills and concepts. Um, students get to play an active role in their learning every day in math. We talk about what we notice, we listen to each other, we share ideas, we problem solve together, we play with partners, we work independently. It's very balanced in how we work on our math skills. Kids are building stamina to be able to persevere through challenging problems. Um, and of course, they love the game. I get to play the games. <laughs> okay, so a goal that we are always working on is making our kids become mathematicians, to think math mathematically, to problem solve mathematically. So one of the things that the teachers use to incorporate that are the eight standards of mathematical practice. It's not a separate curriculum or a separate component, but it's something that the teachers and the students are doing every day while they're solving math problems. So the, there are eight of them. They are making sense of problems and persevering and solving them. So this is just something that we want students to be doing always in life is problem solving, sticking with it, making an effort, and trying different strategies if it doesn't work. So some of the things that we might hear students say or prompt them to say is, you know, I have two strings, how much longer is one than the other? Does my answer make sense? Once they have an answer, does that answer make sense back in the problem that they're solving? The second one is to reason abstractly and quantitatively. And that means that they're taking numbers and being able to apply it into a real life context. And then conversely, taking a real life context and applying numbers into that situation. Third, they are constructing viable arguments and then critiquing others' reasonings or problem-solving strategies. And here we're teaching students accountable talk, making them disagree respectfully. Oh, I solved it a different way, but we both have the same answer. Or I disagree with that answer because. So getting them really being able to explain their thinking and to look at someone else's strategy and problem-solving and see how they compare and contrast. 
Number four is to model. You're seeing them do this all the time with the pattern blocks, with the unifix cubes, um, with their fingers, with counters. So they're always being able to model the math that they're doing. Eventually, when they get older, it's with the equations. And then number five is to use the tools strategically. So when I'm faced with a problem, do I know which tool is going to be the best one to solve that problem? Okay. Number six is attending to precision, and that is not just finding the right answer, although of course very important. We also want to make sure that they're using the appropriate labels to an answer if solving a word problem. Are they using the correct vocabulary? If they're drawing a picture or using a tool to solve their problem, is that model precise? In number seven, they are making use of structure. So it could be a structure in a pattern of shapes. It could be looking at numbers and being able to pull those numbers apart or decompose them to find the answer another way. And finally, number eight is to look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. So they are being able to look at, for example, in this bottom one, 10 plus 3 equals 13. How can I show that another way? So really building that number sentence and understanding that I have 10 plus 3 and 5 plus 8, but both of those equal 13. They're both the same, they're both the same number but a different representation. So in kindergarten through second grade, there are two main components for bridges. We have problems and investigations. Problems and investigations are what you think of like the typical lesson, the whole group, the whole class working together. And then the second part is we call them workplaces. This is where kids are playing games, practicing independently, applying their skills and all of their learning on their own. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. So a few more examples of problems and investigations. This is going to be when new skills are introduced. This is going to be a um, little bit of independent and partner, and then we come back to the whole group. We're problem solving, we're sharing our ideas with each other so we can listen to each other, learn from each other, hear more ideas, learn about different tools, um, and see how it all goes together. So here's some explaining. Am I 20? Oh. Am I 20 minus 10? There will be still 10 because oh, in there's the a 10, 20. 20 minus 10, that will still be 10 because a 20 is a half of 10. So you can, so you can go to 10 again and if you add 5 and 5, that will be 10. And and there's, and there's two rows that makes 10. And with you, with, there's, a, with, there's three rows of the team, if you take one row away, it'll be 10. So this is a perfect example of how we go a little bit deeper than just saying how many boxes are in this 10 frame. How many do you have? Um, and what's great about that video is this is, you know, a month into school and I've already got confidence to be able to explain it. So that explaining is one step further than what kids are used to doing and um, it's definitely encouraged in everything we do every day. So workplaces is that second part of bridges that we have every day. Um, this varies from day to day, but overall you can count on workplaces being very engaging they're developmentally appropriate for our kids and our learners. Um, they're differentiated to meet needs of our learners as well. And um, they suggest those ideas for teachers in order to make that um, appropriate for all of the learners in the class. We do have partner games, but we have independent ones as well. Some of them are more structured and then others are a little bit more exploratory. So there's definitely a variety every day that kids are practicing. Okay, number corner is a completely separate part of our curriculum, one that we're really excited about. It is a 20 minute 
time that is completely separate from the one hour of math. And within this, they are working on building the really good foundation for computation. So it's not just teaching them the formula or the rules to solve a problem, to find the answer, but really get building that background into why the answer is the answer and different strategies to solve it. So they're building skills. A lot of that is based on a calendar, but it's not the traditional calendar that we think of. As they go through the month, they're presented with a different image on each calendar marker. So they're looking for patterns each day of the month. Um, they're eventually looking for equations and um, sharing that idea with others. So you can see this was, this is a second grade example with fractions and then getting into some shapes and some clocks and money. So it builds those different skills all through the year. Um, some of this is introduced earlier in the year so that when they get to that skill or target that we expect them to have mastered later on in March or April, they've had so much background with it that it becomes just very natural for them to then be able to demonstrate that mastery. all of those, okay. So calendar grid, as I just explained on the last slide, is flipping over the calendar markers and then look for the patterns. There's also a calendar collector where they're doing some estimating. So they might be looking at time and they collect 30 minutes each day and so they're seeing the progression of time throughout the month. In computational fluency, this is where we're building those strategies for them to be able to quickly and mentally add and subtract. We're not asking them to be able to do that now, but it's building the strategy so that when they are uh, timed or given a fluency test later on in the year, they have that strategy ready to go. Hey, we are always counting the days in school in kindergarten, first and second grade, and then doing a lot of work with the number line, which is new for a lot of us. You'll see um, all of the grades working with an open number line to begin to solve addition and subtraction problems so that they can solve some larger addition and subtraction problems mentally. So maybe going to a friendly number, making a 10, or making uh, jumps or counts of fives and tens. And the daily rectangle, sorry, I forgot about this one in second grade. And this is giving them some exploration into arrays and equations for multiplication. We're not calling it multiplication yet, it's just getting them familiar with the, with the um, arrangement of arrays and rows and columns. And here is a number corner video. This is a first grade classroom. So the data is counting up by ones, but observation. One more observation that we notice. Malika? It's equation, equation, no equation. Equation, equation, no equation. Equation, equation, no equation. Equation, equation. So the next one will be equate, no equation. Oh, so you're looking at the equation column. And remember, we said we're not doing our story problems quite yet. So she's noticing that there's blanks. And so I Okay, so I don't know if you could hear that very well, but the student was saying equation, equation, no equation, 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 no equation. So he was finding the pattern as he went through the days of the calendar marker, and they become very quick at then making predictions. Oh, I didn't have an equation here. I think it's gonna be another day with no equation. So also building that prediction skill. So we often get questions um, about how to support at home, and one thing that stands out is if um, your child is having homework, brings homework home, encouraging your child to explain what it is um, and do it independently and then tell you about what they did and why they did it. Asking questions, getting them to explain it um, will really help them with that deep understanding of the skills and concepts they're working on. Um, another thing is just finding ways to bring it into everyday life. There's math all around us, um, no matter the age. So for younger kids, they love exploring, sorting, counting, so encouraging that. Um, anything around the house that you can 
find to sort, to count games. Um, a simple deck of cards can have all sorts of games, and kids love them. Um, and we have, oh, I'm using math vocabulary. So instead of saying, oh, put them into groups, you can actually use the word sort. You can use the word counting. You can use um, any kind of word that you think fits in with what they're doing. There's things on the tape right now. You have, there's 10 frames, five frames. Um, so you can see kind of what we're talking about. So even calling it a five frame or a 10 frame, instead of um, the boxes, Kids will know what they are, and they can explain it to you. Um, and a lot of our homework doesn't come home until they've had enough practice with it at school. So by the time it comes home, you should, they should be able to tell you about it. That's the goal by then. So using the specific vocabulary is very helpful. Um, asking questions about problem solving, encouraging problem solving. It's OK to, get a, to make a mistake. Once we make a mistake, what do we do next? Um, what could we try differently? Sorry, I keep doing that. <laughs> um, what could we try differently? Persevere through the problem. Um, these are those skills that will help them with everything they do, so that's a great way to support at home. Encouraging curiosity. So anytime they're asking questions, encourage it, have the conversation, discuss it with them, see if they have anything else they want to add. Um, with math, we see so often that our brains work diff differently, find answers differently, think of things differently. So even hearing those explanations from kids at home, you know, might be different than how you would have thought it would work, but um, letting them explain it and encouraging the thought process is really helpful. Um, every unit in Bridges, there's a family ladder, so that will be coming home. Um, I know a lot of teachers are sending them with newsletters, so making sure you keep an eye on that, and then it tells you basically what the unit is going to be covering, and it'll tell you about some of the tools we're using, so that will give you the, that um, knowledge, that insight to what's going on in the classroom. We have an app called Dreambox that every classroom has, and it is um, research-based, and it adapts to how the kids are doing, so it's differentiated just based on how they're playing in each game. Some things really hard, it can intervene with them. It's a very um, awesome program and the kids love it. It's very friendly and visually, um, visually exciting for them. So Dreambox, if you have an iPad or laptop or computer, anything at home that they can access the internet, they can do that too. I think that's great. <laughs> So that's the end of our formal presentation. We do have some of the manipulatives that your child in kindergarten, first, and second grade will be experiencing. So please feel free to stay, look at some of those. We will also be here to answer questions if you have any. Um, and if you have a child in three, four, or five, you can certainly go and join the other presentation. There are a few different components in Bridges and Number Corner that are slightly different in the older grades, so you are more than welcome to join them too, but we will be here if you have any specific questions for us. And thank you very much again for coming. Oh, and I'm forgetting to talk about what is on the screen. Um, this is a QR code that will link you to a Google Doc if you have any questions that you do not want to ask us, that you just want to want to send in. Um, math coaches will then be going through that and putting together the answers, and that will uh, be on the website that you can check later. One thing I forgot to tell you at the very beginning is that um, we were being recorded. It's not on any of you, it's just on us. But this presentation will be on the district website um, probably, I would say, by next week. If, you, if there's something that you want, forgot and you want to remember, that will be up there. And the three through five presentation will also be on the website. Okay, thank you. Okay, and you can also keep any of the papers.
I'm sorry. You can keep any of the paper handouts on the tables, um, not the manipulatives, please. The cubes are pattern blocks, but the papers are yours if you want to take them. Um, one more thing about this QR code is if you fill it out and you put which building you're in, um, obviously there's just the two of us. And so other coaches are in the other presentation. So if your child attends um, Kildeer Country Meadows or what am I forgetting? Um, Ivy Hall, those coaches will see your questions as well, okay?